Hi, welcome to another educational video by Catspit Productions. Today we're going to talk a little bit about film output and uh, I wanted to discuss just, just slightly uh, what, what types of materials there are available for you to make film and what you can use as film and how we output them with different printers. Uh, this is an inkjet printer, this is a laser printer, okay, and I use, I use uh, Illustrator and Photoshop to create my artwork on the computer and I will print it out to one of these two uh, printers depending on the type of material I'm using, okay, and let's note at this time that uh, idealistically or ideally you should have RIP software which is uh, software that is designed to control the printer, uh, especially Epson. There are a lot of there are a lot of RIP software. There's a lot of RIP software for Epson printers because Epson printers seem to dominate that particular market of film output. So, uh, like, there's one that's available. I think it's Shareware, and it's available online. It's called QTR, I believe, and it's it's a uh, Shareware RIP software you can get online. You just Google it. Uh, either Google QTR or Google free RIP software and you should be able to find it and it's configured for Epson printers so you have to have an Epson printer to make it work properly. Okay, and what it does is like I said it controls the printer and makes sure that, that your print is dense enough, that it's opaque enough because when you use just Illustrator or Photoshop printing out directly to one you know, laser or inkjet printer it's going to be, you know, well, it's going to be a little translucent. Now, I don't know. This is vellum, and this is laser vellum. Okay, this particular vellum is made by Casey's Translucency or Casey's Page Mill, I believe they're called, and it's a, a laser vellum. So this goes through the laser printer, and without RIP software, the density of the print is very poor. Okay, so this vellum. Uh, you know, is whether you can use this with your particular emulsion is, it depends on your emulsion. I, I couldn't, this is, this is not dense enough for me. Okay, so what I had to do was I moved to an inkjet, a clear inkjet film, uh, but again, I don't have RIP software, right? So what I do is I print it out twice and because it's inkjet, there's no distortion between the printings of each piece of film. So as you can see, I can double it up, all right? So I have one big sheet on the bottom and then a second print and I cut it out and I, I basically tape it down on a light table and line it up very precisely, okay? And that way, the opacity of the dark areas is what I need. So I can do a full, almost a minute exposure if I want to with this particular film, whereas with this, I could barely do 20 seconds. Okay, you had to underexpose with this because the light was penetrating through. Okay, so there they are there like that. This, the light's probably reflecting off of this one a little bit. Okay, all right. Again, here's the same thing. Here's, uh, here's the dragon, the Chinese dragon, and this is on the inkjet film. This particular film is really good for people like me who do not have RIP software, and I don't have an Epson printer, so I, can, I can't get that shareware program. I think it's only like $50, and you can have it running, and it's really important, it's great, but I just, you know, I'm not gonna spend the money for a new Epson printer. So I, I'm doubling up this film. And this film works through an inkjet printer, like I said, and it prints, lays down black, and it's, it's pretty, pretty dense. You know, all I have to do is double it up, and that stuff is opaque, okay? And this is how I get by without having RIP software, okay? Here is the same thing, uh, the same piece of artwork. This is done on a laser, a laser film, again, the density is very poor, and with the laser films, you cannot double them up because they're plastic, they shrink. They shrink and distort when they go through the fuser. Okay, so 
uh, laser films can't be doubled up, unfortunately. So this one basically is just as good as the vellum. Okay, this is laser film. This is laser vellum. Okay, and the density of these two are probably equal. They're very poor. Okay, so that's why I left this. I don't like this. I don't use this anymore. I don't like this. I don't use this anymore. <laughs> I use these. Okay, and you can see the tape. Uh, that does not pose a problem for exposure. The, the, uh, your exposure, uh, your light source should penetrate that uh, scotch tape fine. Especially if you're able to do almost a minute exposure, it'll be fine. Okay, and uh, here is the laser, here's the laser vellum that on, on two particular pieces I was able to double it up. But what happens, because the laser film is frosty, you see how white this gets. And now that does get a little bit difficult for your light source to penetrate, especially if you have to underexpose because the density isn't quite there, right? So, you know, again, now, there is also one other technique that you can do, which is a home, a home brew. It's a garage boy technique. And uh, if you're doing a simple one color, you know, maybe you're just messing around in the garage or something and you don't really want to invest a whole lot of time and money into outputting your film, what you do is, is out, output your film on, on, with a laser printer or a, or a Xerox machine, a copy machine. Um, on white paper, just like you would, like just print it out on a white piece of paper, like this, either laser or a copy machine that's not inkjet, no inkjet, okay? And then what you do is you actually saturate, you're gonna saturate this piece of paper in vegetable oil. And the vegetable oil will make the paper translucent, much like vellum. Okay, so you can actually use a black and white Xerox or copy or laser print soaked with some vegetable oil as your piece of film. Okay, you're gonna need a pretty uh, intense light source. You wanna make sure your light source is powerful enough for that to penetrate the translucent vegetable oil soaked paper. And also, you're gonna need to make sure that your uh, emulsion doesn't, you know, you're gonna have to try one and see if the emulsion is adversely affected by the vegetable oil. Okay, and uh, that's about it. Uh, like I said before, I'm not an expert as far as artwork goes. My forte is printing, so I, I never really go into too much detail about how you create your art. So if you're looking for information on how to create the art in the computer, check out my favorites lists, or my favorites list. I have uh, a, a collection of videos there in which uh, there's a lot of tutorials on uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and how to create artwork for screen printing, okay? And pay attention to some of those, you know, YouTube channel guys because uh, like TutVid, I think it is, T-U-T-V-I-D, that, that's a really good one to subscribe to and uh, very helpful, okay? And that about wraps it up for today. Just a little bit of quick discussion about your, your film output and the types of films that are available. Um, of course, there are much more professional ways of doing this. You could use an image setter, but we won't go into that at this point because that's uh, a very expensive piece of equipment that most printers do not have. Uh, so we won't talk about that. But be aware that there are other ways which are, are highly more effective and uh, a lot more professional and commercial to produce your artwork than using home printers. But, you know, what works, works. And if it works, then that's okay. Thanks again for watching Cat's Pit Productions educational videos. Please subscribe and don't forget to check out the website at catspitproductionsllc.com. Thanks for watching.